if you don't want to reap it and you don't want to reap a whole lot of it, don't sow it. Welcome to the Voice of Triumph with Roger R. Woodard, Senior Pastor of Family Worship Center located in Kings Mountain, North Carolina. Pastor Woodard's ministry is reaching a hurting world with the life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Now, from Kings Mountain, North Carolina, here is Pastor Roger R. Woodard. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency, may abound to every good work. I uh, began this series because I felt like some folk needed the touch in their life to show them how to be overcomers, how to live in the economy of God. This that I preach to you, and I'm coming to the end, not today, but about two more installments, changed my life. Two books other than the Word of God changed my life. One was this plan of economy by Jack Taylor that I've been preaching to you. The other, of course, undercover by John Bevere. Literally changed my life. This changed my life forever concerning how I live, my finances, about do I wring my hands when I have a lack when I'm in a financial crisis, no, I don't. Because I settled the point of my salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Paul came to that. I've come to that. The second thing I came to, if I can trust him with my soul, I can trust him with my finances. If I can believe him to keep his word about my spiritual life, I can believe him to keep his word when he promised he would supply all of my need. My effort in the, from the beginning is get, to get us to believe this. If we can come to believe this, above all else, whatever else is going on in our life today, whatever circumstance you brought in the room, are you left at home you're going back to? You will not view it the same if you will believe this book. All I can do is preach it to you. If you think I have ulterior motive in preaching it, then you're free to dismiss it. But I'm telling you, I'm giving you the Word of God. There's a whole lot of stuff out there on TV and different places that taint necessarily so contain a little bit of the Word. But what I'm giving you is the Word. And this is the Word quickly. Reality is not you, not me, not this room. Oh, it's real, but it's temporary. And we are headed into the ultimate reality where we will live either with God in heaven or separated from God in hell, and that's just the way it is. That's reality. The ultimate reality is the unseen. Because we serve a God who routine, routinely does miracles. And the miracles are things we don't see except by eyes of faith. Why are you here? You're here on purpose for a purpose. You're here to be an extension of God's presence, an exhibit of God's power, an expression of God's person. God wants to fill us so full of himself that wherever we go, no matter the circumstances or high, or high, high the odds are, victory is assured because of the Holy Ghost living in us. Now, I'm not going to press. If you want to help me, you can. If you don't, I'm just going to preach. You're not here for self, although we mostly live for self. God cannot allow a need 
in your life or mine beyond his power to meet that need. But so that we will come to realize that and come to realize that there are times when we have no option but to believe God. Because there is no other option, no other power that can meet our need. God lets those needs come to us so we can learn. If we have to walk on the water, He's a water-walking Savior. Hey, if we have to move a mountain, He's a mountain-moving Savior. No matter what our need is, those things are in the Bible, not because we literally need to move a mountain or walk on the water, but so we can understand that no matter what we do need, He's got our answer. And so there is our example of a human being living perfectly in the economy of God. He was here on purpose, had no agenda apart from the Father. He was here to do the Father's will. He did what he, heard the, he, what he saw the Father doing. He said what he heard the Father say, and he was never guilty of doing the wrong thing or saying the wrong thing because he was on mission from the Father. That's where you and I circumvent the will of God so many times in our life because we do have an agenda that is our own. And very seldom do we allow it to be bent to the will of God. That's where strife comes in a family, where strife comes in a church. It's when people with their own agenda and their own will will not bend it to the will of God. And so therefore God's will for us, sometimes for the church, is circumvented by carnal people who will not release their agenda for the unity of the body. Y'all are here, aren't you? You say, well, I, I can't do this. Listen, God's not asking you and me to do anything we can't do. And if he does ask us to do anything that appears we can't do it, we need to get excited because he's about to work a miracle through us. It begins in that verse, if you put, put a clock up on the wall, it begins with God's ability. God is able. Comes down to you and me, God's able to give all grace. And that all grace is abounding, it's not meager. And it is abounding to you and me. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you always. Boy, I tell you what, I'm preaching to a foreign country today. That you always, having all sufficiency in all things. Maybe we ought to just tear that verse out. We don't really believe that. To meet the needs of every good work. See, it's not about us after all. It's our needs met, then it flows through us to meet the need of every good work. Well, what qualifies as a good work? It has to be God-ordained. It has to be exercised and run for God's glory. It can't be for the aggrandizement of flesh. It has to be redemptive. It has to be about getting souls into the kingdom. I'm going to preach today on something that uh, perhaps we might like to skip over the law of the harvest. The law of the harvest is very simple. There's nothing quite like a seed. It knows nothing. It does nothing. It's useless until it's planted. If you want a harvest, you've got to give away the seed. That seed has a life force in it that if planted, cultivated, that life system in it will burst forth to new life. One grain of corn the size of my fingernail will grow a stalk over six feet tall and uh, uh, reproduce itself by the thousands. But it has to be given away. You have to go out, dig a hole, put it in the ground, leave it there. It's out of sight. It's out of your control. 
The only thing you could do, you, you could cooperate with it, but you can't do anything else about it. You could circumvent its life and just hold it on a shelf and not sow it. But if you sow it and you give it a chance, it's going to burst forth into new life and reproduce itself. Any farmer, it doesn't matter how good a farmer you are, you can't circumvent that process. You could cooperate with it. And a good farmer learns when to plant, where to plant, according to, listen, to the seed's needs. We plant according to the need of that seed. Planting at the wrong time, wrong place, wrong soil could prove disastrous for our harvest. There's another law incorporated in the harvest. No amount of cultivating and acting farmerish will compensate for not sowing. Go out and cultivate the field and look like a very competent, busy farmer. But if you don't sow, you won't get a crop. Not only will it show on you where you've sown, but where you didn't sow. And you go out and you sow. But when the plant begins to come up, look at the gaps. Everyone will be able to see where you didn't sow. They won't know it immediately. It won't be readily apparent. But when it's time for that harvest to come in, and it's time for that crop to start sprouting up, the gaps in your row will be evident to all. And here's the deal. The law of the harvest is you reap more than you sow. You reap what you sow. So if you go out and sow corn, you're not going to get the okra. You will get what you sow. So if you sow wild oats, don't pray for crop failure. You reap what you sow. If you don't want to reap it, don't sow it. You sow what you want to reap. If you want to be a loving person, then that's what you need to do. You'll cultivate, it'll come back to you. You be a loving person, people will fall in love with you. If you're kind, people will be kind to you. Oh, there'll be some sore tail cat somewhere. That'll be the exception of the rule. But you sow what you want to reap. So the law of the harvest is you reap what you sow. Time, talent, money. A lot of people are just greedy. I know people that I'm convinced have those the first dollar they ever made. And you go see people in business, they'll put the first dollar they ever made in a little frame and, and put it up in the business. And that's okay, I'm not slamming that. I'm just saying there's some people that are so greedy, they don't believe they can pay tithe and give offerings. I need that for myself. I used to give that way. My whole life, I gave grudgingly. Every dollar I put in the plate, I didn't do it cheerfully. I did it because it was an obligation. And as a pastor, of course, I felt like I had to do it to set the tone. But I could think of a hundred ways I could have used that dollar. I didn't know about being a cheerful giver. I didn't know about being a hilarious giver. I didn't know about the investment of sowing and reaping. I've never been taught it. But I don't give my time. You people that gave your time yesterday to the distribution, you who came here and worked getting things straightened out around the church, I, I appreciate that. But... That's not your ultimate goal. The one in heaven saw your efforts, and he's the one that's going to reward you openly for that which you've invested in the kingdom. These musicians, these singers, they may not be aware of it, but we're playing instruments and singing unto the Lord. You and the audience, when you give your, the praise that you were giving, you lifted your hands. Some of you ran and laughed and jumped. What is that? Unto him. 
We weren't putting on a show. We're not trying to show out for anybody except our Heavenly Father to let him know we believe you are worthy of abundant, copious praise. He doesn't get it everywhere in the houses so-called of worship where people have gathered today to worship and if you cough, they think you've disrupted the service. No, 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 he is worthy. And I don't know how those people are gonna feel if they make heaven and that's the nauseous place they've ever been in their life. Because they praise and they praise. And why do we praise? For no other reason than we know he's worthy. We've praised him through our pain, body aching. Praised him, some, praised him sometimes when it hurt in the stomach, when our head hurts. For one reason, we value our God and we say he's worthy. He's worthy of our highest praise. And most of us in this life have never given him the highest praise that we're capable of giving him. But he's worthy of it. And we do that, that worship, as an investment in our Heavenly Father. When we come down, drop our tithe and offerings in the plate, or if we send someone, or ever how, it's an investment because we deem him worthy and we worship with our giving. Now, that's where you need to get to with your giving and understand that that giving is worship. Worship as evaluating it as he's worthy and you're investing. I never give now with the idea, oh, I gotta hold on to that. I'm investing in the kingdom. Stock market might go crazy Matter of fact, it's been very erratic lately. And your investment can be wiped out in a New York second. I hate to even mention New York, but that's true. And the bottom line is this. What I've invested in the kingdom, I can't lose. There's no drop in that value. It's eternal. And I've invested in the kingdom of God. And I've invested it with an investor who said, I'll give you a return on your investment. What is that? It, the return on the investment. Let me run it down for you. First of all, he's invested in me the blood of his son. And through that investment, he has given me eternal life. And he has brought me out of a horrible pit and placed my feet on the solid rock and given me a reservation in the new Jerusalem when this life is over. I have a place. We sang it today. There's a place for me in my father's house. I didn't earn it. I couldn't buy it, but I've invested in the kingdom and that's what my investment has brought me. He invested in us, his son. And then he invested in us the Holy Ghost and sealed us and told hell, this is my property. This is my son. This is my daughter. They're mine. And the devil brings his accusations. And he turns a deaf ear. I can't hear a word you're saying. They're mine. Oh. You ought to be happier than you're looking. What if he didn't do anything else for us? We've escaped hell. If he didn't do anything else for us. He delivered us from the law of sin and death. But that's not all he does. He woke you up this morning. He watched over you while you slept. He's gone looking over you while you traveled and while you went about your business. You weren't lucky you didn't get in a wreck. You weren't lucky bad things didn't happen. You have a heavenly father watching over you and said, I'm watching you so close. I even keep track to the hair on your head. Mm. So you invest in the kingdom. You can't lose it. It won't be diminished. So the law of the harvest is you reap what you sow. Secondly, 
you reap more than you sow. There would be absolutely no point in sowing kernel of corn to get back a kernel of corn. Where's the profit in that? Nobody would earn a living that way. So again, I go back to my point. If you don't want to reap it, and you don't want to reap a whole lot of it, don't sow it. But what you want to reap, sow it. Time, giving of your talent and your ability, and of course, your money. Why? More's coming back. I can't, I could for the next two hours, and I wouldn't exhaust you. Well, I might exhaust you, but I wouldn't exhaust the stories, real life stories that I could tell you. God said, Give someone in the body $100. And it might be $100 at that moment we needed, but before the day was out, we get back $200 or $500. Just the, the law of sowing and obedience. You know, a lot of us act like God just don't know how to stretch a buck like we do. If God just knew how to stretch a buck like me. I'm not preaching get rich quick. I'm preaching a way of life. People with a giving attitude, a giving heart. Some, sometimes I feel terrible because people will come and say, I feel like God wants me to do this. And I always stop and I say, are you sure God wants you to do this? Yes, I'm sure God wants me to do it. Then I can receive it because I know he's going to give it back. Because what you invest in the kingdom, you can't lose. You the see, y'all got any place to go? That's why I could come down here and drop my tithe and offerings on the stage or in the offering plate with a smile. I've got the privilege to invest in the kingdom. Now, obviously, I'm skipping way over this outline and just getting to the point. What Jesus said, a grain of corn doesn't have any value unless it's put into the ground and dies. Now, he wasn't teaching. <laughs> he wasn't teaching a lesson on farming. He was teaching a lesson. I ain't going to read it. I got it all marked out, but you need to read it. In 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, he was talking about death, burial, and resurrection. He's talking about he is the first fruits that is planted in the grave. Again. Now I hate to get to this, but it's the truth. What do we do? We take our loved one. Out to a cemetery. And we plant them. And we put the dirt and the flowers back over them. And we weep. But eventually we leave that grave because we know we've done all we can do. We've planted. And we walk away through our tears and our adjustment without them. But, thank you. For the child of God, we walk away from where we planted them in the kingdom. And that seed decays and dies. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But that mortal will put on immortality and the corruptible will put on incorruption and they will be raised again in new life because of the investment of Calvary. Jesus, as surely as he got up, you'll get up, I'll get up, unless we're living when he comes for his church, and then we'll be caught up. That's, that's 
the power of investment in the kingdom. So when you spiritually bow your knee and give your life to Christ and, and repent of all of your sins, you die spiritually so that you can live eternally. That's the investment of Calvary in you and me. Not just you and me, but multiplied millions, if not billions, around this world. The law of the harvest. One last point, Margaret comes. I haven't touched a fraction of this message. The law of the harvest is you reap what you sow. You reap more than you sow. And you reap later than you sow. The farmer knows when he has to plant. He goes out and he puts his precious seed in the ground, pats it down and walks away, leaves it. He knows the harvest will come later. If you have given your heart to Christ, you've given your life, you've planted your soul in the kingdom of God. You gave it away. In anticipation of reaping later. Mm. Over 60 years ago, a little boy Lincoln, Alabama, in a little bitty room, said yes to the Lord. Life has been kind of wavy, but I've never given up on that commitment. Now, staring down seven and a half, still paying dividends in my soul. And faith is going to give way to sight. And even though as a kid, I didn't really realize the seriousness of what I was signing on to. Life has quickened that lesson to me down through the years. Thank you for joining us today for Voice of Triumph. We invite you to check out our website at www.familyworship.org. There you will find information on our church service times, special events, purchase our books and music, and also information on becoming a partner as we continue to take the life-changing message of Jesus Christ to a hurting world. If you'd like to write us concerning our program, our address is The Voice of Triumph, P.O. Box 396, Kings Mountain, 28086, USA. On behalf of Pastor Woodard and the entire Family Worship Center team, God bless you and we'll see you next week.